and let's get into the history of a certain character in this week's Superhero Spotlight. He's about to make another of his live action appearances. His third? In, uh, fourth. Fourth. Mm -hmm. Fourth character to play him in live action. It is The Punisher mm -hmm. about to premiere in Daredevil Season 2. What's his deal? Why don't we listen to his origin ourselves? My whole family died in a mob hit. I should have died too. I took enough bullets, but I lived. I finally figured out why. The ones who killed my family, the saints, and all the other scum, they've given me a reason to live. I'm back. And it's their turn to die. Ooh. Is that Tom Jane? That's Tom Jane. That is Tom Jane from the game. Punisher video game because uh, he did the voice in the game. Did? They hired yeah. him for I never it. Knew yeah. that. that game is pretty good. It's I happen to notice it's one of the only games from the Xbox period on your shelf or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I have a weird mini so yeah, I have a weird mini Punisher shrine. I have the first appearance, I have a sealed copy of this game. And then I think there's some figure from the 80s or 90s in there. It's a seal. It's such a sad sealed box because it has this horrible, horrible yeah. of the era sticker on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was made by Volition, who would later go on to do these Saints Row games, wow. and it was them showing off their crazy, it's a good uh, game, man. violent abilities there, but. Brad, you spoke of his first appearance. Yes. Frank Castle's first appearance was in Amazing Spider-Man 129, February 1974. And his credited co-creators are writer Jerry Conway and John Romita Sr. Mm. Now, he wasn't the artist on the issue. The artist was Ross Andrew, who is an mm. amazing artist. And the guy who did the cover was Gil Kane. Ah. So why is it John Romita Sr., you well, ask? Why, Henry? Well, because at the time, he his official job was the art editor. And mm. so when the, the system in the early 70s, was I've come up with this idea for a character let's take it to John Romita Sr. at the time he was just John Romita <laughs> let's take it to him and he'll show us how to design this character he'll make it up that's why he's also the credited co-creator of Wolverine mm. he drew the first drawing of Wolverine and Jerry Conway wanted to create this character who would be an anti-hero type character uh, his first appearance was fighting Spider-Man he was tricked Spider-Man was wanted for murder of Norman Osborn because Norman Osborn had died like seven issues earlier pretty much and nobody knew he was a Green Goblin and he thought Spider-Man was responsible. So here's this guy as a vigilante. Didn't have much origin explained. He was just a crazy vigilante in a skull shirt and he was like, I'm going to kill Spider-Man too. And it's it's one of the like, iconic comic book covers. Yeah, it's a great cover. He's got Spider-Man dead in his sights just uh, in, in Spider-Man's just like prone it, and in this weird it's a position. very compromised position yeah yeah it's a great a great great cover now conway wanted to call him the assassin mm. and it was actually stan lee who changed it to the punisher wow. because he was around and heard from conway oh this guy is going to be the assassin and stan lee said well you know in fantastic four we had a character named the punisher and we haven't used him in a while put that as his name <laughs> no, that's not a bad impression that was good that's, that's the good. best stan mine. lee i've ever done <laughs> Uh, are they both the same person? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was set up from the beginning what his powers were, that he is an awesome marksman, a mm -hmm. militaristic dude in awesome shape, can beat a, but a human with no powers, mm -hmm. has a huge arsenal, and like Spider-Man beats him in hand-to-hand -hand in the first appearance. Once they start fighting, Spider-Man's like, yeah, all right, punch, there, you're down, you're down, old Frank. <clears throat> Spider-Man lets him go, and there's this weird thing where Spider-Man says... Boy, uh, his problems make mine look like a piece of cake. Ooh, ooh, and, the, and like it, this weird jokiness in the last panel there. Uh, from then on, like he made sporadic appearances throughout the 70s, mostly in Amazing, in Amazing Spider-Man. He was just poised to be like a Spider-Man villain for the rest yeah, of his life. Yeah, or just an anti-hero mm. for Spider-Man to see. Kind of like the background characters like the Prowler or Morbius mm. or whatever. All those 70s dudes who would right. just appear every few issues in Spider-Man. He fought Captain America around that time, too. Spider-Man teamed up with Nightcrawler, and they were, came at crossroads with Punisher. Uh, but it actually wasn't that long until Punisher got his background as a Vietnam War vet. It happened in two comics that kind of just melded together in the same thing. They were both written by Jerry Conway. Uh, and that's Marvel Preview Number 2 and Marvel Super Action Number 1, which shows they didn't have much faith in Punisher. They're just like, look, put a single Punisher story in this side book. Who see, see what people give a crap about mm -hmm. it. And that's when they set up the origin Punisher just mentioned in the clip, which is family killed in a mafia hit. Well, the crossfire yeah, of a mafia hit. They are hit, killed right? in the crossfire of a mafia hit. He shot two. 
He lives and is going to get his revenge on the mafia. And then he decides to have a war on all crime. He doesn't take prisoners. He shoots them in the face. Yeah. And that's yeah. also when they set up his Vietnam background, which has had to shift over time yeah. mm-hmm. because it can't be it can't be hooked to Vietnam. For a time, it was a Desert Storm thing. Well, I, I, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but in the 2000s, it, that... Nam comes back. Yeah, the Nam stuff comes yeah. back, yeah. But though even into the 80s, the Vietnam thing was his thing because there was this Marvel comic that was very celebrated at the time that now nobody talks about, which was Nam the book. Like yes. It's called The Nam. The Nam. And he has, it's mainly not tied to Marvel, but he has a guest appearance in it, which I feel like was just to sell books or whatever. Right. Uh, but yeah, so he just has all these random appearances, but then a big change happens for him. In there was Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number Fifteen, September nineteen eighty-three. It's a really fun little story, but the important part is it is drawn by Frank Miller. It is mm. one of Frank Miller's first Marvel books, mm. but he's only the artist on it. But clearly, Frank got an affection for Punisher, who'd only had like a dozen appearances up right. to this point, in like eight years. Because a year later, six months later. Frank takes over Daredevil as writer and artist. There you go. And in the most, I'd say the most important stretch of time for for Daredevil in that run, issue 181 to 185, Mm -hmm. which is right after Elektra's death, that's when Punisher comes in. And that is like, even though he started as a Spider-Man villain, he's much better as a Daredevil nemesis because... Daredevil is all about the law, mm-hmm. but he skates the line between yeah. legality, but he still respects the law. He Meanwhile, he's you not going to kill people. He, like. Yeah, he doesn't kill people, and he wants to try people for their crimes. Meanwhile, Frank Castle, he it's the law of the street, and him and Daredevil just have fights about... It's kind of what you're seeing in the trailers for the new yeah. show. They have battles of an ethical dilemmas just as much as they do with their yeah. fists. And it's they a, come to blows, and it's an interesting dynamic because Daredevil won't kill Punisher because he doesn't, and Punisher mm. really doesn't want to kill Daredevil, Daredevil because he knows he's right. Yeah. 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 They both, they, but like, they're uh, both they, Catholics, too. They both, <laughs> yeah. they both have Catholic guilt in, used in a different way. He's a nice no, Italian well. boy to Frank Castle. <laughs> so have they had a Castle. fight in a church where they're both yelling about about the law i would bet at some point that has <laughs> let's happened. say somewhere yeah. in 30 years but, yes they, like reading some of the what the punisher knights or what was it called marvel, marvel knights? knights punisher like they retroactively set up like hell's kitchen as punisher's turf as well yeah yeah they both operate in there they, yeah, both, but they want to protect the neighborhood for the same reasons against the same people they just have mm-hmm. different methods of going about it and it should be for make for a very interesting yeah. netflix binge yeah. Yeah. yeah i cannot wait to see that all right so he does that stuff in in the Frank Miller books, but mm-hmm. also Spectacular Spider-Man 82, Bill Mantlo writes this story where he doesn't seem to have a very high opinion of the Punisher, mm-hmm. and he decides that the Punisher should go crazy and not just shoot at drug dealers or criminals who mm-hmm. deserve it, in quotes, but like he shoots at a litterer. He shoots at a guy <laughs> having an argument at his wife. Like yeah. it's He goes nuts, and he's taken to jail, and he's like, why don't people see the world the way I do? This is all a corrupt system, man. It's like... Sounds Bill, a lot like Ren in Space Madness. It, <laughs> he, he, got, he gets Space Madness. He really does. And it's nuts. But but the like two months later, Punisher gets his own solo miniseries. A five-issue miniseries. It's a written, great cover, too. Written by Stephen Grant, art by Mike Zeck. Stephen Grant is an un... He's an usually uncredited in the punisher mythos but he saw punisher as an existentialist who he had this he has this great article about how punisher is a man who realized there is no god there's no judgment and he he just has to kill everybody himself and he it's an existential dilemma he's not he's not the nra poster boy that some people see it as like because stephen grant's a very like liberal dude but so that's how he saw the punisher and also in the very first issue they're like Oh, Punisher was given drugs by some guy to make him crazy, and now they're gone. And, and that's and that's it. And yeah. we're not talking about that. But, yeah. And it was clearly that Mike Zeck, Stephen Grant run was a huge success because once those five issues was over, the next year, July 1987, he gets his first ongoing series by Mike Barron and Klaus Janssen, who Klaus Janssen is famous, at, most famous, I'd say, is the inker on Dark Knight Returns. And, and he's one of Frank Miller's regular inkers and so and the boss in the game boy mega man game <laughs> <laughs> and then so july 87 he gets his first ongoing that's proving so popular that by november 88 he gets war journal oh, that, wow. like it's that big he gets war journal 
And it was also so big that by 1989, mm-hmm. he gets his first movie, <laughs> the R-rated yeah. Dolph Lundgren, Louis Gossett Jr. <laughs> starring yeah. action film that is just a dark... I, I watched a scene from it, and it was too drawn out to get a good clip from, but mm-hmm. it's, it's Louis Gossett Jr. meeting Frank in jail in a jail cell he's like what the fuck man we took an oath you're killing people motherfucker <laughs> like they're like swearing all the time I'm and, Italian yeah. Catholic <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does by Dolph Lundgren standards <laughs> it's an okay American I have accent. somehow yeah. never seen this movie it's yeah, not good and, and you gotta give it to Dolph Lundgren he, draw, he dyed his hair jet black for it too. It's, it's somehow it's you witch. say somehow but I think it was released very early on DVD but at the time, you probably most wanted to see it. Marvel did not want you to. Well, I mean, yeah. I remember seeing it in VHS in in like Podunk. I, I where just I grew knew up, knowing like, about it and like looking at all the local video stores to see if they carried it. They did not. Yeah, and blockbusters I, only carry like, new things. Like my video store had it. A friend or two had a VHS of it, taped off like HBO or something, and just never watched it. It, sound, it seemed like this won't. This can't possibly be good. It's a total <laughs> Canon Films type production that was actually yeah. made by New World Entertainment, who also made the animated shows they did mm-hmm. the pride of the x-men they were mm-hmm. the people credit on the pride of the x-men thing uh we watched for patrons <laughs> over ten dollars yeah i did love in that canon documentary uh sylvester sloan talking about like you gave dolph lundgren the leading the speaking lines? role you, the guy <laughs> lines? what so that was a flop nothing really happened with it but then by 92 Punisher gets Punisher Warzone. He yeah. has three comics at the same time. That's how like bloated, not yeah. bloated, but how big the market. But had like Spider Man had three books. Yeah, so like Spider Man. That's, that's the level where I came into comics, and I came in yeah. thinking Punisher and Wolverine were the Marvel figureheads. Yeah, Spider. I knew Spider Man and Hulk, but like that's that's what I started reading. Because he was cool, he fun- mm-hmm. he freaking shot people. He had he had his own type Q dude named Microchip. He had the Punisher van, yeah. his battle van. He lived by his own playbook. <laughs> he had he had a crazy arsenal, had his own stuff. special brand of justice. And he also rarely got a collection of supervillains because he mm-hmm. killed yeah. most of them. <laughs> Jigsaw was one of the few, and Jigsaw was a dude who got beat up at really bad in a fight with Su- with Punisher once, and just had a face full of scars that looked like a jigsaw puzzle. Right. Uh, though he did end up fighting like. Doctor Doom, Hulk, and Wolverine around that time too. Was... And there was uh, an NES game where it's like an on rail yeah. shooter with like Punisher <laughs> in the foreground, and you like move a cursor. And I played it a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. Is that the one with the advertisements? Like, hi, I'm Spider Man. This that's, is my friend Punisher. That's and the, I've got a game. So yeah. the Game Boy and one. The game yeah. Boy yeah. one. Yeah. Stars and it has like a Starburst, like featuring the Amazing Spider. I know that almost got me to buy. Yeah, it. I it almost, almost played did. it because of that. So around that time too, he was kind of get involved in like Shield stuff, but. By 95, Punisher books had slumped. And they even did this whole storyline where Punisher was part of a faked death of Nick Fury. People thought Nick Mm -hmm. Fury was dead. The Hell Carrier crashes again. Punisher is sentenced to death, but he gets away with it. And they try to... uh, He's... He somehow survives the electric chair. And he is kind of put in a 97 reboot by John Orstander, but it doesn't really work. There were a couple other failed reboots where he came... First, he became a black man. Then he became a literal avenging angel where he was given the powers of heaven. I read that issue on a playground at a summer camp. I remember it. Uh, and he got a couple crossovers uh, in during the 90s, too. Archie, yes. the crazy Punisher meets Archie, which... It's honestly a fun book. I, yeah. I like that the one artist draws Archie, one artist draws Punisher, and <laughs> they just kind of get drawn together. There were also the Batman Punisher uh, mm. crossovers in the early 90s, too. And it came at a weird time, the Batman crossovers, because the first one happened when Jean Paul, aka Azrael, was Batman. So first Punisher meets Azbat. But then by the time the second crossover came out, because they did it back and forth, DC publishes yeah, one, yeah. Marvel publishes the other. The second one, Bruce Wayne is Batman again. So Punisher's like, wait, you're who are you? I met Batman. You're not Batman. Uh. When he fights that Batman, Bruce Wayne fucking mops the floor with him. Like mm. Punisher tries to kill the Joker. Batman's like you don't get to do that. Yeah. And then there's a big two page spread where Punisher punches the Batman. And if you just look at that page, it looks like, Oh, Punisher beats Batman. He wins. Mm-hmm. And then Batman just gets up, wipes off his face is like, you get one. <laughs> and then Punisher takes a swing at him again. And then Batman easily just like Crunch. Kung Fu's him to the side. <laughs> like I said, you get one, get out of Gotham. 
Standard Boom. Riverdale while you're at it. <laughs> I remember one crossover because one of the other 90s, very 90s characters at the time was Ghost Rider. Oh. And there's a two part, I swear it's called Vicious Cycle. <laughs> is a two part <laughs> is a two part story. Uh, but it, it's a, or Spin Cycle. I don't know what it is. I but believe that. It's about a, a giant, like, roving gang that have a giant, like, fortress on wheels that roams the LA highways. And they're just and, and it's a crossover with Ghost Rider because he's obviously on a motorcycle, so he ends up in L.A. chasing them, and then Punisher gets involved. And again, the, the whole spirit of vengeance with the Punisher, you can tell they're trying to do another Daredevil thing. Yeah, because Ghost Rider is a literal demon that who does punish people, who punishes quite people, a lot. but in the most like just way. He makes you feel the pain you inflict. That's it. You don't die from it, but it's it's horrifying. But it's also not due process. It was this like weird like third part of a triangle with like Daredevil, Ghost Rider, and Punisher. Yeah. It, it was interesting. It didn't go anywhere, but the premise was interesting. Well, speaking of not going anywhere, Punisher <laughs> was really not going anywhere. He was just kind of in limbo. Nobody knew what to do with him. Yeah. Enter Garth Ennis and yeah. Steve Dillon, the team behind Preacher uh, and John Constantine. They come to they come to Marvel to revitalize Punisher under the Marvel Knights banner. And it is back to basics as it comes. Like, Garth Ennis basically even has Castle say, I was an angel. I told him to shove it. I murder people, and that's what I do. And it's just... It, it's a crazy book of, of it, that just got crazier and crazier in violence. Yeah. Where he would... He, he threw an elderly mafia woman into a <laughs> polar bear pit, and then they eat her arms and legs, but that yeah. was it. And, she's, and she survives. And she survives. And it's also where you get stuff that was used in the 2004 yeah. movie. Kevin Nash would play the... Kevin Nash yeah. would play the <laughs> Russian, his big enemy in it, who... Has boobs in the... Uh... Who later gets boobs. So... That's the thing. I so I do love Ennis's take on Punisher, but before it went before it went adults only, yeah, it got really silly. Yeah, it got well, re- he, he, he was having fun. It became half a comedy book. Well, he viewed superheroes were a farce anyway. He thinks they're all a fucking joke. Like yeah. it, it, Punisher's the only one he seems to like in Marvel, yeah. and that's the thing that would annoy me as a yeah. dweeb. That like Spider Man would show up, and then Punisher would say. Spider Man, you suck and you're dumb, and yeah. then he like pants him. Or in Spider Man, yeah. <laughs> Spider Man would just cry like, "I'm not as cool as you, Punisher." Yeah, the last story before it turned into what we're going to get into next, which is the Max series. The last storyline is called Confederacy of Dunces, mm-hmm. and yeah. it's Punisher basically beating up on Wolverine, Spider Man, and Daredevil. <laughs> And uh, God, the way he writes Wolverine is both awful and hilarious. He hits him with a steamroller. Yeah, he <laughs> runs. He literally runs over Wolverine yeah, yeah, with a yeah. steamroller. Yep. Uh, that's in the Max one, I think. But yeah, it, it, I don't know. It, it ends with this weird, like you. He has this person that he's feeding this like food to. Punisher is, uh-huh. and you don't know who the person is, but he's just like, no man, just keep eating this food. And the guy is just like, why am I eating this food? I don't understand. And it, you can tell he's trying to remember something about himself, but Punisher's like, keep eating this food, and it's so he'll forget. Uh. And then he knows at that point, Spider-Man, Daredevil, and Wolverine are eventually going to get out of the hilarious trap he set for them. Uh-huh. And then they show up, and then he reveals that the person who's been sitting there eating this food the whole time is Bruce Banner. Now he realizes who he is, and he's the Hulk. So the Hulk is his escape plan. He knows that the moment that the he, the heroes find him, he can trigger Hulk, and then he'll just get away in the, in the chaos. And that's how the story like that's funny. He just but keeps, it is, yeah, it's so extreme. Yeah. The, so is like Ennis's first book with Punisher was Punisher kills the Marvel Universe, yes. which mm-hmm. is a really fun what if, but also like it's too such an extreme like. No, Punisher, I'm sorry. Yeah, Punisher yeah, yeah. wouldn't beat Doctor Doom. It yeah. just wouldn't happen. Yeah, there's a lot of ones in there that are... It's a jo- but it's yeah. a joke and book, it's, so... It's whatever. I mean, his my favorite joke in it is that he kills all the X-Men <laughs> by tricking them to have a giant crossover on the moon, and then uh-huh. he blows up a nuke and just yeah. kills them all. Yep, uh, all the mutants are gone. Uh, but so then, yeah, it got... The violence in it got so crazy that in 2004... They decided, you know what? No, this is an adults only line. It's going to be part of mm-hmm. our Max line of comics, which was where Alias was published, which, you know, became Jessica Jones. That's where he kind of got cordon for about a few years. He was just in that corner. Like Punisher didn't appear. Yeah. And that's because they had to make that's when they made the demarcation of Punisher Max is not Marvel U Punisher. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's He's also, still a Vietnam vet. Yeah. So Ennis did this really, if I could tell you another, uh, one of Ennis's best Punisher books is called Born. Yeah. Which is a mini series about how Punisher was born in Vietnam. He wasn't born when his family was killed. It shows him as the like the only survivor of a of a huge failed assault in in Vietnam. 
and he comes back from Vietnam and is he's changed by it. He's changed by that. He was born there, and it's it's a really great little story yeah. about about him. And that continued on even when Ennis left the book. When, in Ennis's Max Line stories, he just fought like sex slavers, drug dealers, like the worst of the worst. Yeah, but no, no, there's no powers. No powers. No, no Superheroes crossover. were barely in it. He, in. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think Nick Fury showed up, but like as yeah. a like I'm like a spy, not a head of a crazy organization. And, and, and Marvel's he, okay with me saying swear words. Yeah, it's it's super violent, super cussy, and it was it was an amazing read at the time because yeah. you got to see Punisher do things you in your mind you knew the Punisher had to be doing these things mm-hmm. but now they graphically depict them well and this also this led to another of my favorite lines it ended with Punisher Max which mm-hmm. was this like 24 issue ish epic by Jason Aaron, Aaron and Steve these Dillon great. it takes Punisher Max to its natural conclusion which is he is a 60 year old man mm-hmm. he's aged in real time yeah and eventually he's gonna fail like there's he eventually time will catch up to him and this time he has to fight the max version of kingpin mm. the max version of bullseye who is amazing i love the max version of bullseye and electra it's so great but that's when max ends meanwhile in the marvel u comes civil war yeah that's where punisher for the marvel u comes mm. back and he has the white gloves and the white boots that yep. you kind of remember from the 80s because the max was stilt man in the face yeah well it started with civil war which was really cool because he briefly joins captain america's side yeah and it becomes this part where captain america realizes like oh i'm working with a terrorist what am i doing he's yeah. murdering people and there's this great scene where captain america is beating the crap out of punisher because he's so mad he's like Fight back, and Punisher says, "Not you. Like he yeah. wouldn't. He wouldn't fight a Captain America. He respected him too much." Wow. And then that led to the brief uh, Punisher War Journal series by Matt Fraction, which was good. Where they seemed to insinuate that Punisher was going to briefly become Captain America, but he didn't really. He did take his mask off the battlefield. Yeah, but then doesn't this turn into Frankencastle at some so point? So <laughs> then, a couple of years later, comes the Dark Reign storyline. Norman Osborn takes over Shield. And he has a list of five dudes he wants to take out. One of them is Frank Castle. Uh And he succeeds. Frank Castle is dead. Chopped up by Wolverine's son. But he is found by the weird 70s m- monster men. And he is rebuilt as Frankencastle, a walking corpse. <laughs> which he remains for about 12 issues. And then by the end, almost like a magic wand, they're like, and now you're human again. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, why? why not? That led to a brief Greg Rooker run, which was pretty interesting. He also was a member of Thunderbolts. I did read what, like the first four or five of those. Where he uh, he becomes friends with benefits with Elektra in that book. And he learns to hate Deadpool. They have a nice little uh, one-upsmanship in there. Uh, he also helped in the original Sin crossover. He was oh, a big yeah. part of that. Uh, and then he killed a bunch of villains in Secret Wars and now currently has no book. Like, doesn't have a solo book. I would bet that won't last too long. Now that Marvel's got him back in the movie Yeah, n- yeah now that the show's going to be out, like, Comic-Con, I bet, July this year, mm-hmm. they'll announce something. So as for his appearances in other media, so yeah, we talked about the movies. He starred in the 89 movie, 2004 movie, then also the 2009 Lexi Alexander Punisher Warzone which uh, was a very underrated, ridiculous film. As for cartoons, he's appeared in the... He made a big appearance in Spider-Man animated series where he shot lasers at people. (laughs) But he was still pretty intense. Vietnam lasers. (laughs) And he also had a funny appearance in the Superhero Squad Mm kids show. We're nothing but white blood cells. Hunting the infection called crime. A sickness that sneaks in through the cracks. The way that Brussels sprouts sneak onto a plate of delicious macaroni and cheese. <laughs> sure, the city looks safe. Just push the Brussels sprouts to one side, right? <laughs> Raw, <laughs> no matter where you put them, their vile vegetable juices corrupt the whole plate. Oh. I'm out here to keep those stinking sprouts off the mac and cheese. Keep them from leaving the store in the first place. Wow. Is that, is that the guy who played him in War Journal? I think so. I, yeah, it was the man who played him in War Journal. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Who was, like, I, I know Dolph Lundgren and Thomas Jane, and then the guy from The Walking Dead. Mm. Who else has played? Well, the War Journal guy, but I don't know yeah. his name off the top of my head. I did not get Katie that down. Jones? 
But I mean, Thomas Jane is the most famous yeah. one. But there, I just want my kids back. <laughs> just want my kids back. All right, Tom Jane. That does remind me because when I was uh, working at Toys R Us with that that Super War Friends zone, that, that Super Friends mm-hmm. line or whatever the the Ray Stevenson is the Ray mm-hmm. Stevenson thing. the happy smiley version of this yeah the, the superhero squad yeah. yeah whatever those it were. was like before they could get the Lego license they're like yeah it's our own Lego yes this is like oh four somewhere around there and there was like oh here's cute Cap and cute Falcon and cute this that whatever. And then one day there was a cute Punisher, and I'm like, he's, he's like a smiling, squat, like goofy proportion guy with the skull on his chest. And I'm like, you know what the Punisher is, right? Yeah. Like, how did the kid, like, a four year old take this? I'm going to kill everybody. Like, I don't know. I thought that uh, was strange. Like begging children to discover your dark past, their dark past. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I, I had a Punisher toy at like 10 years old, yeah. but he was at least grimacing. Did you have one of those giant, like, I had from the Marvel early line, they had the, like, the tall toys, like 12 inches tall. I had yeah. one of Spidey and one of Punisher. I didn't get the tall Because I remember one night I got very sick and threw up uh, <laughs> on my Punisher toy. <laughs> I, no matter how much I washed him, he never smelled the same. <laughs> I, uh, I have to death. imagine that's worse than his experience in Vietnam and his family uh, being killed. A child puked. Having an, eight, an eight-year-old fat kid. An eight-year-old up nerd threw up on me. I did a, uh, in community college, around that time period, I had a Punisher shirt that was just the skull, and I remember wearing it to school, Ooh. or to college. Were you an MMA? Uh, <laughs> no. But I remember at the time, my, my anthropology teacher, which is a whole other story, but he stops me in the hall, and he just looks at me, and he's like, he looks at me like head to toe with this Punisher shirt on, and looks at me, and is like gestures at the shirt like what does all of this represent <laughs> and i was like it's a comic book character and he just like the slowest blink back at me and is like i see and then just walked on and i just carried with that me to this day of like shut up go play sports what do you what your what, what answer did you want? yeah what answer did you want as for video game appearances we talked about his nes game and also his uh volition game he also has an arcade game yeah, it was an arcade played. game by capcom mm-hmm. for 1993 and a 2009 arena-based shooter from zen published exclusively on the ps3 a lot of people miss that game huh mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember uploading screens for it early in my yeah. career at Video Game Press. Uh, and also, he's appeared in a lot of the like Marvel Alliance, Marvel Heroes. Sure. He's, he's been a support role in that. And so now, he is being played by Walking Dead Shane, yeah. John Bernthal. Mm-hmm. And there's some talk of how they're going to handle him. They're like, well, we got to be careful because he can't be an advertisement for the NRA. No, I, I, uh, think, I think Deadpool has replaced punisher because the, the climate is not right for a character like punisher to exist with no sense of humor and only guns <laughs> deadpool you have to get at least funny like deadpool he literally does. took over the kills yeah. blank thing yeah, from punisher yeah. and does that now punisher, exclusively. but punisher is the most humorless man yeah. in the world which also i think is why garth ennis was so into making him funny because mm-hmm. he doesn't laugh ever uh but yeah so that that's where we're at now with the uh, punisher and we look forward to seeing him in that is the superhero spotlight? Select your hero. 